We're tracking breaking news now as a military escort awaits the arrival of Senator John McCain. Earlier today, we watched as his flag draped casket was loaded onto the plane typically used by the vice president and is referenced as Air Force Two. When the vice president is aboard, you see that plane took off marking John McCain's final trip from his beloved home state of Arizona back to Washington, where he worked for decades and shaped in many ways the America we know today. And we are expecting Senator McCain to arrive at Joint Base Andrews really any minute now. Team 12's Bram Resnick is right out there awaiting his arrival. Bram? Yeah, as we've been along the side of the road here for the last uh, half hour or so, folks keep stopping and asking, are you waiting for Senator McCain? And uh, indeed we are. This road right next to me here is the main road into Joint Base Andrews. We are assuming, and I want to repeat, assuming that the motorcade carrying the body of John McCain as well as his family will be leaving through this main entrance to connect to the highway that's right next to us and then go on to Washington, D.C. Uh, all of us waiting uh, for John McCain to make his final return to Washington, D.C. The plane carrying John McCain's casket is expected to land at any minute again here at Joint Base Andrews. Make it, the McCain family, along with Governor Doug Ducey, are on board. The McCains are using a jet known as Air Force Two when the vice president is on board. And I want to remind you all, the next three days look like this, uh, three separate ceremonies. Uh, McCain's body will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol on Friday. There will be a memorial service on Saturday at Washington's National Cathedral. And then burial will be Sunday at the Naval Academy for John Sidney McCain, who was the class of 1958. I uh, want to repeat, CNN has reported that Roberta McCain, uh, John McCain's 106-year-old mother, will be, at, will be at all three ceremonies. That comes as a surprise to me. McCain's folks had said it wasn't likely, but she apparently plans to be there. Now, we're looking at some buses. I'm just checking some video out here off to the side, some buses that are also pulling up on the tarmac uh, next to the planes. It is, I have to say it is unclear to me whether the McCain plane that one we're calling Air Force Two has landed is on the tarmac. I can't see that. You're looking at a pool camera now showing us video. Uh, we are out. Okay, Jeff Flake is now getting off one of the planes. Is that correct? I'm told Jeff Flake is getting off one of the planes. Uh, you're watching a pool camera. We are not allowed. Only one camera is allowed inside the gates of Joint Base Andrews. There are several of my TV colleagues surrounding me uh, as we wait. Uh, to see if indeed the motorcade does emerge along this road behind me. Uh, as I said, that is the main gate. Uh, leads to the main gate, the circle of, circle of flags. Uh, that is the entrance to Joint Base Andrews. So again, I see several people coming off a bus. It's still unclear to me uh, where the McCain family is right now. Uh, Joe and Tram? We know that you are just right outside of Joint Base Andrews, so from your vantage point, you obviously cannot see what is happening right now on the tarmac. But as we just showed our viewers some video that was shot live earlier, there are a number of buses, there are a number of vehicles on the tarmac. We just saw Senator Jeff Flake get off of that bus, um, and it looked like he was possibly with his wife as well. It doesn't seem as though Air Force Two has arrived just yet, at least from this vantage point, obviously, because it's a very tight shot of that bus. But we understand that, of course, McCain's entire family, his seven children, his wife, Cindy, they are all aboard Air Force Two. Again, that's a plane that's usually reserved for the vice president and the first lady. We also know that as soon as that plane arrives, he will be received by the armed forces body bearers. Again, this is not open to the public. This is very private as you are seeing right now. A number of dignitaries are on hand to receive him and his family. As you know, he left earlier this afternoon, supposed to be around 1230, but things got a little tied up with traffic and the motorcade and everything. That departure from Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, that happened uh, close to one o'clock. Yeah, and who we see there is Secretary of Defense James Mattis. Uh, yeah. so, uh, Bram, just I don't know James if you can Mattis, see, James but Mattis uh, will be one of the Paul Bear. Yeah, go ahead. I can see that. Yep. I can see that. Let me raise the possibility, uh, raise the possibility there are several planes arriving. Uh, and we may not see where they are, and they may be, these folks we're seeing right now might be being bussed in from planes that could be some distance away 
uh, from where this camera is positioned. Uh, there's Defense Secretary James Mattis. He is also uh, one of President Trump's designated representatives uh, to, for this uh, funeral and for the services. Mike Pence, uh, his National Security Advisor John Bolton, and Defense Secretary James Mattis are all designated representatives of President Trump who will not be attending any of the three services in the Washington, D.C. area. So it might be Mattis is welcoming the family on behalf of the president uh, to Washington, D.C. Mattis also very close with McCain, and Mattis will be one of the pallbearers at his burial uh, on Sunday at the Naval Academy. Yeah, he's an interesting figure because but as clearly you, there are. Yeah, as, as you mentioned, uh, he's an interesting figure in that he was close to Senator McCain and is close to the president. And so uh, the president, you know, designating certain people to to represent the White House or represent the administration. Uh, at this ceremony and we heard s this morning uh, some of the speakers talk about Senator McCain as being able to have uh, friends and colleagues people who respected him on both sides of the aisle and we'll be seeing that over the next couple of days as well. Absolutely. Uh, Bram, let's talk about what is going to happen tomorrow because again okay. that is a big day it is day three of five days of mourning and also remembering our great senator uh, we know that he will be lying in state in the u.s capitol in dc it is going to be about eight o'clock our time again this is an honor that's reserved for really the most eminent citizens since this whole practice began in 1852 this is going to be pretty much uh, very similar of what happened at our very own Capitol in our rotunda. It will. Uh, I just want to point out, I'm told the plane, the McCain plane, will be landing within minutes. So we're going to keep our eye on that. You can, if you see me turning away, it's because I'm watching a, the plane. Okay, we're Actually, told now the plane is landing. Actually, it has just landed. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one eye on, on a camera. Okay, there we go. So it has just arrived. Uh, the McCain has, the plane has landed. So just to get back... And I'm just looking behind me. I hear some jets overhead. Occasionally, it's kind of like the West Valley out here. If you live near there or travel through there, you hear the sound of fighter jets occasionally up in the sky. And that's why I'm looking up right now. I hear a fighter jet. Uh, and there we see the military jet, which is more often used as Air Force Two landing at a Joint Base Andrews uh, just outside Washington, D.C. Carrying John McCain's family. Governor Doug Ducey is on board as well as others. And they are bringing John McCain's body back to the place that was his second home uh, for more than 40 years. Yeah, Bram, I want to ask uh, you after he left the uh, after he was released as a POW. I want to ask you something as we're as we're seeing this plane. What a day it has been. You know, the vice president said something so poignant during the ceremony this morning. He said, "I was thinking about why John's death hit the country so hard." He said, "I think it's because they knew the people that the pres vice president has talked to." that John believed so deeply and so passionately in the soul of America. What is it you took away from either the vice president's comments or other comments uh, from this morning's ceremony as we see the plane here? Uh, I, I agree. Well, I, I think I agree with what you're saying. It, it's, it, you know, the emerging theme is, you know, service, you know, for a cause larger than yourself. That cause is your country. We've seen that in the last several ceremonies. We hear that from speakers. Uh, that is what John McCain was all about. Uh, and that is the one thing that will outlast him. Now, I want to make it clear, John McCain was a very complicated man. John McCain was a very complicated man. There was a lot, many facets to this man, but this is the one thing that seems to unite everybody. You know, his patriotism, his service, and a cause greater than himself or ourself, our country. And I said a couple, I said a couple days ago that the McCain folks don't want this to be uh, President Trump versus John McCain. Well, folks, you know what? It's going to look that way over the next few days uh, with the president's absence at ceremonies, with what the speakers are going to say, with the bipartisanship you're going to see at the National Cathedral ceremony on Saturday. Uh, that's going to look like something we haven't seen in a long time. Presidents Obama and Bush getting together to praise a man both of them defeated for the prize he wanted most of all. And it was John McCain himself, the news reports tell us, who invited them to deliver eulogies at this memorial. Think about that for a second. How many politicians would do that? How many people would do that? 
Uh, that says a lot about this man, and we're going to hear a lot of messages from John McCain beyond the grave over the next few days. <laughs> That's a great point. I think you're right. And the vice president, he also said there was something almost archaic or ancient about John McCain that a lot of people didn't understand because he would want to create that unity with both sides. And, and he said, you know, at times John McCain would get to a point where he was trying to work with someone where he realized they are not in this for the bigger picture of America. And so he would stop working with them. So Bram Resnick providing some of his comments there. We're going to go back to him in just a little bit. But again, what you're seeing here is uh, the plane that if it's carrying the vice president, it's known as Air Force Two. Uh, but, uh, you know, some of the highest accommodations being made right now for Senator McCain. And you know, when we last saw this plane, obviously when it left Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport close to one o'clock, it was just a surreal moment. And it was so, so deeply sad to know that our beloved Senator, who not only helped our state, helped our country, touched so many lives in his 60 plus years of service to the United States of America, that he left Arizona forever. Mm. And I think that's truly the moment when it hit so many people here yeah. that he, he is forever gone and we we didn't want to say goodbye yeah, you, you know think, we never want to say goodbye because of what he symbolized conviction grit honor you know he he just did so much for so many people and now to see this continuance of more of a sad reality that you know more people will mourn his loss come tomorrow. More Americans will be coming to pay tribute in the Capitol Rotunda when he lies in state, just like how they did here in Arizona. I mean, you thought, okay, there, there could be hundreds of people. Who would have thought 15,000 people came yesterday in the sweltering heat, triple digit temperatures, just to pay their respects to our honorable Senator. And then the lines, they were supposed to be, you know, that, that public viewing was supposed to end at 8 o'clock. And the fact that it, it stayed close to 10 o'clock at night. And then I think another poignant moment of last night was when his children went out there and thanked the people who stayed in those long lines, waited for hours to see their father. There was nothing more special than that. Yeah, an incredible legacy. You think uh, somewhere around 1980 when he first arrived in Arizona, right? He had this unique backstory. He had some experience now uh, working with uh, the Department of Defense, and he got to know Congress a little bit because he was a liaison there in Washington, D.C. He came here believing, you know what? I'm smart enough. There's a, there's a quote. I'm smart enough to do that, basically be a representative, be a congressman. And he thought, I want to do that. So this is where he came, Arizona, the, the Wild West where there's this independent streak that fit John McCain so well. And over time, he found his moment to run and then eventually would run for Senate, seize the moment there. Uh, something Grant Wood said about him today, uh, again, uh, another poignant, I think, quote, John McCain believed in our Constitution and he believed in the Declaration of Independence when we declare to the world, he said to the world, not just to America, he believed that when we declare to the world that every single human being in this world has the right to live free because God gave us that right. You know, he pointed out that John McCain stood beside freedom fighters across the world. He stood with them literally and figuratively. So many of those who are in Washington, D.C., who will be part of the ceremonies of the next couple of days will be uh, from other countries. Uh, he worked with uh, third world countries and refugee communities. He believed that uh, America had this position as a, as a, a, a city on a hill, as a light to the world. And in many ways, uh, he worked to help bring freedom, to share freedom with others. Grant Woods also said something about Arizona. He said, we worry here in Arizona about a bigger picture. And he said, I hope that what he stood for gets a renewed look at what's happening in our country. Grant Woods said he believes so much that in the end, when it's all said and done, this Republican and Democrat thing is not going to matter that much. Very, very powerful words from people who were the closest to him, who re he regarded as friends. You know, uh, Grant Woods, I thought he really, really captured the essence of John McCain. I mean, from talking about his authenticity and the legacy that he leaves behind, 
He said that he's going to miss his leadership, his sense of humor, his love of sports. Sports. He even mentioned, you know, Fitz, Gonzo, and Shane Doan. Not only were they the best players, they were the best people to McCain. Hmm. And that was very touching. He said in Arizona, he was our hero. He was America's hero. Um, you know, uh, Larry Fitzgerald, he went up there. He talked about how he had personally was drawn to Vietnam because of what McCain endured as a prisoner of war. He was a prisoner of war for five and a half years. Yet he managed to forgive. And I was, I remember uh, an interview with Senator Jeff Flake. One of the things that he will remember the most about his fellow colleague was his ability to forgive, which in politics, as you know, can be very difficult. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and the fact that he was willing to forgive, to reach across party lines. And another thing was the fact that he was able to admit that he made a mistake. Yeah. He did. He made mistakes. He admitted them as a prisoner of war. Grant Woods told the story that uh, McCain uh, seemed to be treated better over a few days. And one of his captors in a moment drew with his foot across in the dirt yes. to send a message to McCain that uh, he knew McCain had a Christian faith and that he also identified with that. The senator later, as a politician, he also would use faith as a way to also make certain connections with uh, groups in other countries, humanitarian groups, as again, he worked as a, as a diplomat, not just as a senator. Again, we are giving you live pictures right now from Joint Andrews Base right here. And we understand that the family, McCain's family, is getting off the plane towards the back over there. A little difficult to see, but again, we know that his family is all on board that plane. Um, his seven children are all on board as well. We know that Governor Ducey is there. Again, this is a private reception. He is being received by the armed forces body bearers. Again, they left earlier this afternoon from Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport close to one o'clock. And you can see quite the reception that is being taken place right now. The casket will be loaded onto um, that contraption right there and then lowered and then that is where the armed forces body bearers will take our beloved senator and he will make his way to the U.S. Capitol. Uh, we know that street closures near the U.S. Capitol, they will go into effect starting tonight at 11 o'clock Eastern time, so 8 o'clock our time, and he will spend the next 24 hours in the Capitol Rotunda. And that is where, again, a huge ceremony will take place. You have a number of speakers. We're talking Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan, Vice President Mike Pence. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, Vice President Mike Pence, a number of all the colleagues that he worked with. Yeah, and as Bram mentioned earlier, we now confirming, uh, well, at least CNN and the Associated Press confirming that John McCain's 106-year-old mother, Roberta McCain, plans to attend uh, three of the services, the, the primary three services over the next couple of days. Uh, she always called her son Johnny. Yes. And she's been living in the nation's capital in recent years. Uh, you see there some members of the McCain family right now as they wait for the casket to be loaded off. You know, McCain, a Navy lieutenant, he was born on a Navy base. He was tortured for his allegiance to this country in his uniform. He worked hard in later years to get resources and pay raises for members of the military. He will appropriately be laid to rest at a private burial Sunday at the Naval Academy in Annapolis. Maryland. It appears that's Megan McCain in front there. And and right behind her is her husband, Ben Dominich. So they uh, he you just saw him put his hand on her shoulder. It's been very, very difficult for obviously the McCain family. But as you have seen here in our city, when Megan made her way to the casket at our Capitol, she was just sobbing uncontrollably and you know it's it really brings all of us to tears in so many ways because we never want to think about losing our parents mm. and for her you know they had such a unique bond they had such a unique father-daughter relationship and they were extremely close towards the end of his battle she took some time off of the view she 
took some time off of her job as the host of The View just to come back home to the ranch and spend time with her father, just looking out on their porch and just cherishing these last final days with him. And one of John's other daughters, Bridget, she read a touching scripture as well during her, her father's ceremony this morning there at the North Phoenix Baptist Church. You know, this is the end of an era too for this family. They've sacrificed a lot over the last two or three decades. You know, think about his children who haven't seen his dad, their dad for days on end at times when he would make these trips overseas. He was one of the most active Congress members, senators, in in the uh, in Washington because he cared so much one about meeting with uh, armed services personnel around the world you know one of the last interviews I did he was flying from Afghanistan he had just made a secret trip there wasn't publicized to meet with soldiers one on one for the entire day to talk with them to get to know them and uh, to bring them his message from Washington he did that a lot Mm -hmm. He thrived off of being able to travel and be with the military. And uh, it was that plane ride that w we were doing a phone interview and he was, and then he jumped right into some very complicated topics related to Afghanistan and Iraq and what he believed should happen next. And it was just typical McCain. And he, he was very aggressive in the way he was talking on what he believed should be done. He had been working with James Mattis on getting uh, more uh, members of the military there in Afghanistan. He believed the job needed to be finished quicker and in a stronger way. This was something that he did clash with the administration on. But that's John McCain right there. He, he was very opinionated. He was hawkish in many ways on foreign policy. He was out there in the trenches working with uh, decision makers in the military on the ground. And um, interesting that a lot of times those types of trips are made during Christmas time and you see politicians where the media is making those visits with soldiers, right? But John McCain did it so often during the year when you never heard about it. Not to mention, you know, when you're running twice for president, mm -hmm. that schedule in and of itself is grueling. Can you imagine? And his family, especially his wife Cindy, has been there every single step of the way. And, you know, the first time, obviously, it was difficult and it was quite the defeat. But the second time to do it all over again, again, we're showing you yeah. a picture of Megan right there. Um, pretty stoic. And she has talked about how difficult that was running for the presidency because and remember. she was very young too. Think about what your dad, who you love and look up to, has to go through day in and day out with the, the mud slinging and uh, the controversies that inevitably come up in a campaign. And she has talked about how tough that was for her family and how she held grudges much longer than he did. Absolutely. He was able to at certain points say, you know what, that's behind us, now we move on. I mean, there were some bitter battles, including with George W. Bush in the 2000 race. And uh, people had some bad blood for a while. And, and John McCain was able to then turn the page and move forward because, as he said many times, it's, it's about the country. It's about the bigger picture. I mean, he said it was a privilege to concede to the presidency in his final message to the country that he wrote that we had a chance to read a couple of days ago. One of his very final messages was how much of a privilege it was to have run for the president even though he lost because he knew the importance of the process. You know, I can't help but think as we watch these images, just the pain and the sorrow of losing your father and seeing this, one of the final days of remembering Senator John McCain. It just grips you and it hurts. It hurts so much and you can see that pain that she is going through. Something else Grant Wood said this morning, he said McCain's story is the American story, grounded in respect and decency, basic fairness, and the intolerance in the abuse of power. Something Vice President said is he hoped Americans would remember how John McCain lived, not how he died. He said he would always remember the enthusiasm John McCain had for the political process, the sheer joy and glee in his eye when he was about to take to the Senate floor and start a fight. <laughs> he, the senator was passionate, known for a temper, yes, uh, also known as being a tireless worker 
He had a phrase among his staff members. I believe it was march or die. <laughs> not, not so subtle way to say, look, when you're with me, we work and we don't stop. His casket being loaded onto the hearse, which will eventually make its way to the U.S. Capitol, where many, many Americans will stop by and pay tribute to this honorable, beloved senator. And I want to leave you a quote from Senator McCain that was in his book, The Restless Wave. He said this, the world is a fine place and worth the fighting for, and I hate very much to leave it, spoke my hero, Robert Jordan, in For Whom the Bell Tolls. And I do too, I hate to leave it, but I don't have a complaint, not one, it's been quite a ride. I've known great passions, seen amazing wonders, fought in a war and helped make a peace. I made a small place for myself in the story of America and the history of my times. Thank you, Senator John McCain, for everything you have done for us, our country, and all the lives that you have touched. Yeah, you know, it has been a day of many emotions. First uh, in Phoenix at the funeral service at the North Phoenix Baptist Church, not far from where the McCain family also lived. At that service, we had the former Vice President, Joe Biden, who in one of his first phrases announced, I'm a Democrat, <laughs> to make the point that there are times when we're all in this together. That was one of Joe Biden's main messages. Uh, you had former Attorney General Grant Woods, Larry Fitzgerald of the Arizona Cardinals, Tommy Espinoza, a longtime friend of Senator McCain. They had the crowd laughing and crying at once, telling stories about his wit, his passion for his country, and uh, the vice president saying, uh, John believed deeply and passionately in the soul of America. As Bram Resnick mentioned earlier, uh, a reason why this is resonating so much in the country is John McCain uh, did work hard in this bigger belief about what America's role should be in the world. And there were times he did take criticism for it, but uh, he worked with the other side. At times, shifted positions because he said he believed it was for the, the greater good. Again, took criticism for it, but he was willing to. And, uh, you know, over his time in the Senate, he had a unique role where he had more influence and prominence, so he was able to take some risks as well. You are watching continuing live coverage right now as the late Senator John McCain's body is being received at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland. You can see there Cindy McCain walking um, presumably closer to some of the dignitaries and some of the other politicians that have come in this private ceremony to receive John McCain's body after he departed Phoenix, uh, Arizona, Sky Harbor Airport, just a little bit before 1 p.m. this afternoon. Of course, that was followed up by an incredibly emotional ceremony in, uh, at a church here in Phoenix. And Joe, as you were saying, all of the different people that were speaking today, uh, we had Larry Fitzgerald, we had Grant Woods, we had Joe Biden. Um, and it, it just kind of showed the diversity, I think, of John McCain's life and the people that um, he called friends and the people that he worked with. Uh, each of them sharing very unique stories about their experiences with John McCain. I thought it was funny when Grant Woods was talking about his first day on the job with John McCain and talking about his driving. And that's something none of us yeah. would know about, about John McCain. Um, yeah, he said, he said the first trip with John McCain was, was fun and terrifying <laughs> and at the same time. And terrifying at the same uh, time. We see Defense Secretary James Mattis there, uh, one of Senator McCain's sons, also daughter-in-law, all of them greeting uh, with uh, Cindy McCain as well. We also saw Senator Jeff Flake arrive a little bit earlier with his wife as well. He's, uh, you can see him right there at the, Cindy McCain is embracing Senator Jeff Flake, Arizona Senator Jeff Flake at this moment. Yeah, he appears to be with his wife. His two, two of Senator McCain's sons uh, followed his footsteps into the military, one of them in the Navy as well. And uh, you see, again, a crowd of people uh, who I'm sure are sharing moments about the senator that make them smile. Yes, 
and also make them proud, I think, too. I mean, of course, there's, there's the sorrow and there's the emotion that comes with the passing of a loved one. But I think certainly in this case, you know, as you see your father being flown in on Air Force Two, that has to give you a sense of incredible pride um, that you know that your father was a great man. I mean, everyone thinks their father is a great man, but it's I think it's different <laughs> when really the whole the nation thinks that your father is mm -hmm. a great man. That has to really mean something to them, even in this moment um, of despair and and sadness. Yeah. So this is a live look again in Washington, where uh, John McCain's body has just landed. This is 12 News at five, as we're continuing to cover uh, these final days of remembering the late Senator John McCain. So from there, his body will uh, eventually lie in the state, in state at the U.S. Capitol Rotunda for 24 hours. Another ceremony will be held Saturday at the Washington National Cathedral, where former presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama will both uh, provide uh, comments and give eulogies. These are two men who both beat John McCain. And other speakers will include Majority Leader Mitch McConnell as well. Um, Speaker Paul Ryan is expected, as well as Vice President Mike Pence. And at 2 p.m. Eastern, the doors will open tomorrow for people to pay their respects. McCain will lie in state at the Capitol Police Honor Guard remaining throughout the night. And many people have made it a point. The fact that the senator wanted George W. Bush and Barack Obama, who both beat him in elections, shows the message that Senator McCain wants to send through his passing, you know, a message that uh, we're, we're part of something bigger. And in fact, when Grant Woods gave his his remarks earlier, he actually said that uh, he said, we worry here in Arizona about a bigger picture. And I hope that what John McCain stood for maybe gets a renewed look at what's happening in our country. Mm -hmm. And then he went on to say, you know, he believed so much that in the end, when it's all said and done, this Republican and Democrat thing is not going to matter that much. That was from John McCain's close friend, Grant Woods, who has known him so well over the years. And I think that's what John McCain would want, is that the way he lived, the way he conducted himself, the way he conducted himself as a politician will inspire the rest of us, the future, um, to, to do the same thing. Joe Biden also, there were so many beautiful things that were said today by the speakers. Joe Biden saying it was always about basic values with John, giving hate, no safe harbor, leaving no one behind. Understand that as Americans, we are part of something bigger than ourselves. And I think that's a common theme throughout what people say about John McCain and what he, you know, preached often was be bigger, you know, be part of something that's bigger than just you. It's not just about you. It's about making change and um, standing up for for injustices. And um, we're seeing Jack McCain there and his wife as well. Let's go to Bram Resnick, who is on the ground there, Nay. not far away. Bram, are you able to see the image as we are? What are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I have my glasses on. I have my phone in my hand because I want to see what you're seeing uh, as this plays out. I'll tell you my thought right now. That person next to Cindy McCain should be the president of the United States. But it's Defense Secretary James Mattis and good for James Mattis. Uh, he is stepping up. The president asked him to because the president will not be part uh, of any of these ceremonies this weekend. And that just jumps way out at me. I'm sorry. That is just the way it is. Um, and there's the family. We, before we saw, I think, all the senators who attended the Phoenix service earlier today, they must have flown back on a separate plane. Now, I warn you, I may have to cut away in just a moment because it looks like the family is getting ready to leave. And as I told you, this road we're along is the main entrance to Joint, Joint Base Andrews. This is the main, main drag into the base. It's just a few hundred yards behind the stoplight uh, behind me. So we do expect them to come out this way. It is possible they, may, they might not. Uh, we're told there are two separate entrances, two other entrances and exits to Andrews. This one goes directly to the highway, and that's the presumption. This, when the president arrives at Andrews, this is the way he goes. So we're presuming that's going to happen. Joe? All right, Bram, thank you. And of course, all of this will lead up to tomorrow, where the senator will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., with the ceremony there beginning at 11 o'clock. That would be Eastern time. So here in Arizona, that would be 8 o'clock 
in the morning. And as we mentioned, there's going to be a number of, of speakers there that will be um, sharing their, their memories and their thoughts about their relationship with John McCain and his relationship with our country. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will be there. Uh, Paul Ryan, Vice President Mike Pence will be in attendance. Bram mentioned, you know, just his thoughts on not seeing the, the president, President Donald Trump there to receive him. But Mike Pence will be in attendance tomorrow. And um, doors there will open at 2 o'clock as, as people in Washington, D.C. pay their respects. And there is no doubt that the outpouring will be just as tremendous as it was here in Arizona. And uh, I, I think we have Bram still with us. Bram, you know, there are efforts being discussed as well to remember Senator McCain in different ways. Uh, NATO has talked about uh, possibly naming their headquarters after him possibly uh, and then of course the the senate building there could carry mccain's name if some have their way a anything else you're hearing about those developments or anything else there in washington dc as a matter of fact joe we we may have found happened upon something our producer was in one of these senate office buildings uh this morning as he went to get credentials and there was a workman working on a McCain, a metal McCain name. And I think he may have joked that it was going on the building. For the latest, latest information I've seen is that uh, some people don't like this idea. Some, some people, some Democrats don't like the idea. They prefer a remain named after uh, Richard Russell, a longtime senator from Georgia, who was an opponent of the Civil Rights Act, but yet they argue did many, many great things. I'm not here to judge Richard Russell. Uh, that's just uh, what they're saying. But I, I think it is safe to assume that many, many more buildings will be named after John McCain. You know, I have to tell you, I think we'll, we'll show these pictures shortly, but I, I went to McCain's office, the senator's office this morning, uh, to, pay a, to pay a condolence call. Uh, to pay a condolence call there. And they allowed me to walk around and take some pictures so I can show you uh, what the inside of uh, the lobby entryway of Senator McCain's office looks like. And, and what you see there is a picture of Senator McCain, his wife Cindy, and his mother Roberta on the mantle. There are seven pictures of the family, one of them. One of them is John McCain pushing two-year-old Megan McCain in a stroller. Uh, every other picture has the entire family, but there's that one with Megan, which I think, which I think tells you something about their relationship. Back to you. Yeah, and you know, um, Megan, we haven't heard from her, her yet in the past couple of days, but she will give a tribute um, to John McCain on Saturday. This is at an invitation only national memorial service that will be held in Washington, D.C. at the Washington National Cathedral. And so um, no doubt that is going to be emotional because we saw her yesterday at the state capitol where McCain was lying in state. and. Um, you know, as you can imagine, she, she could barely keep it together. She could barely breathe. You know, her, her emotion was just pouring out. And so uh, no doubt that will be very emotional as she gives that tribute to her father. You can see live images right now. These are coming from Joint Base Andrews in Maryland. John McCain's body has been received. It is now inside of a hearse and we have seen that move on now. So there is a procession with the hearse, a number of other vehicles. It looks like a couple of buses there as they leave the runway there at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland. We have more insight and live coverage coming right up.